This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. to the west coast of the United States we go for the lovely strains of Larry Bowles Brown. Hello, Larry. <laughs> yes, from the wet, cold west coast. Oh, it's highly a, overrated climate. Yeah, well, it's freezing here. And, yeah. <laughs> and last night I looked out the window and I think it was snowing, but it didn't it didn't settle on the ground. I could just see flakes kind of in the light. So, yeah. I haven't left the house in... Like, uh, I used to like winter when I was a kid. Now I can't stand it. I haven't left the house in uh, several days now. Quite a few. Uh, <laughs> I, I, and I say, today I'm going out. I'm going down to the store. I'm going to go do this. I'm going to do that. And I can't get myself out the door. It's like really? every bone in my body aches from the cold, you know. And it's, 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 ter- it's ter- terrible. It's terrible. Now... It, who knows? By the time the way things have been going with global warming and everything, uh, by the time we uh, we do this sh- play this, uh, it may be a hundred degrees. So, <laughs> you know. could be. Although I've seen some scientists say they think the the uh, climate thing may actually go to more of a cooling direction. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe we'll have another ice age. That'd be cool. Well, uh, then it will wipe out every person on the face of the earth, and so therefore our little arguments about <laughs> Our death- dream came true. Yeah, no, but our little arguments about, you know, one thing or another, uh, like, uh, you know, in, in Washington, D.C., and so on, Republicans and Democrats and conservatives and whatever, will seem so trivial you know, yeah, you'd be yeah. so trivial, and and they don't realize that actually it is all very trivial, very trivial. You know, they just uh, they're just arguing the way they should not argue. Uh, eh, what the hell, fuck them all. You know. So how are you doing? Uh, good. I was. Uh, I just heard the you know Dave Chappelle and Chris Rock were in town this weekend and uh, selling out eighteen thousand seats. I think they had a. Someone told me they had a seven million dollar gross. Was, the cheapest ticket was two eighty five. Oh. The high ones are twelve hundred. Jesus Christ for comedy. Yeah. <laughs> for stand up. How much? And was they were it? getting. Uh, they were getting like uh, in. They were in Europe. They were getting sixty thousand people to come see them. And uh, uh, someone told uh, Dana Carvey told me that. Uh, Rock has just been on fire since Will Smith hit him. That's <laughs> a huge career boost. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, uh, um, um, how much money did they make in San Francisco? In one, how many one performance or how many? For one show, and I think they're doing two or three. Of one show with a uh, seven million dollar gross. Seven million dollar. That's just on tickets. I don't know about merch. Yeah, but so oh, seven million dollars. God. Damn, where did they play? The Chase Center. It's a new uh, where they play basketball. It's a fairly new place. Oh, okay. All right. Well, you know, it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, terrible. <laughs> it's terrible. So I keep hearing the economy is bad, but it seems like there's a lot of people with a lot of money. I don't know. Yeah. Well, this is this is not comedy anymore. Okay. I mean, you like to think of it as comedy, but really, these guys are just stars. Okay. Yeah. It's an event. Yeah. Yeah. Are you there? Yeah, what? yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. It, but I just thought, God, I, I thought we had big crowds when we did the Frost Amphitheater. <laughs> I had 9,000 people. We That was yeah. maybe the largest comedy show the Bay Area had ever seen. Yeah. You know, so. Uh, although, uh, let me see, I saw Jay Leno there. And I don't, but I don't know if he sold the place out like we did. Of course, how do you sell that place out? It's just a big lawn, you know. I guess you can squeeze in one more person, you know. But we had yeah. So that was uh, that was an amazing day that you had there. That was nine thousand people. Yeah. Yeah. 
and it paid off a uh, a debt I had to the IRS. So it was worth doing. <laughs> what what they hit you for? Um, I, I don't know, but my in those days my business manager was kind of like loopy, okay, and he didn't didn't handle the taxes well and forgot to pay some, and I owed them something like, uh, oh, I don't know. Twenty thousand dollars or something, but I made like twenty five thousand dollars on that show. So, you know. uh, yeah, yeah. And, and I probably could have made more money, but I didn't like to charge really high prices. You know. Uh, but yeah, I forget what your ticket prices were for those, but uh, I don't remember. I think I think they were like around ten dollars or something. Yeah, the, it wasn't outrageous. I remember that. Yeah, they weren't outrageous. And we would rent out the auditorium. We would rent out the Frost Amphitheater so that we, all the money that came in was ours. So, you know, that's the way those things ran. I think that's how they ran. I didn't run them. My business manager did. The same guy, of course, who didn't pay my taxes. <laughs> you loopy business manager. Who didn't pay my taxes, you know. But Show business is rife with business managers that have ripped stars off. <laughs> well, no, I'll tell you, I, got, I have a... a I have a great guy. He's still with me because he got his act together and, and, and has done right by me ever since, you know, and has never stolen a penny, okay? I trust him implicitly that way, you know? So, um, I mean, even what he did with the non-paying of the taxes had nothing to do with him pilfering money from me. So, uh -huh. you know, I mean, he let me know about it as soon as he heard about it, and that, that show took care of it, you know. And since then, he's really gotten his act together, and he's been done right by me all these years. So, I mean, if I tomorrow got another business manager, another accountant or whatever, how, how do I trust that guy? At least I trust this guy, you know. But you're right. A lot of comedians got fucked over by, by accountants yeah. who... Still. And actors, and uh, yeah, I think then the Beatles get ripped off by some guy uh, early on. Uh, did they? No, no, no. They got ripped off later on when they when their manager died, and they went looking for another manager, and they got what's his name? I'm trying to remember his name now. Uh, there's a guy named. Uh, there's Brian Epstein, and there's Alan Klein. Alan Klein. That's the name I'm trying to remember. Alan. That was the guy. I think that was shady. Yeah, Alan Klein was shady, but I one time I asked, I think it was uh, George Harrison, I said, you know, uh, uh, Alan Klein doesn't have a brilliant reputation. How do you feel the fact that he may be stealing some money from you? Because after it was all over, he was managing Harrison. And Harrison said, if he steals a lot of money from me, I still made a ton of money. <laughs> so he's kind of welcome to it. You know, I, it's a strange kind of thing. Like, you know, do you do business with the devil you know? So it, it, it's, uh, um, it, the guy made Harrison a lot of money. And Harrison, actually, of all the Beatles, was, well, uh, was probably the least, um, uh, how can we call it, exploitable uh, on, with the public and so on. And uh, he managed to get hit albums out of him and a lot of, you know, whatever. So, I mean, you know, here's, here's what Alan Klein would do. He would make a deal with, like, Capitol Records, right? And he would say to Capitol Records, okay, I will let you have the Beatles records, right? Still carry the Beatles. Uh, but you have to give me 10,000 copies of the album for me to sell on my own. Well, how much is that worth? You know, so he did that kind of thing. Okay. But, uh, you know, Alan Klein, I, I've never met up with Alan Klein. I met up, he had a guy by the name of Pete Bennett, who was his assistant. And Pete, I did biz, business all the time with Pete, and Pete was pretty good. You know, he was a nice enough guy. Everybody kind of liked Pete. Uh, and uh, But, uh, you know, the Beatles knew that the reputation Klein had was not particularly great i mean he had, what he had done here here's how you go from one thing to another um like i knew a guy who was married to uh, linda lovelace and then he left linda lovelace his name was chuck trainer and he started uh, 
living with and uh, and I think he even married uh, uh, Marilyn Chambers. So, you know, you go wow. from one to another, right? Well, Klein was the same way. You know who Klein's big client was before the Beatles? No. The Rolling Stones. Oh, wow. You know, <laughs> so he managed them for a long time, and a lot of the stuff was copywritten under his company, Abco, and uh, then they left him because they didn't like him because they felt he was not doing right by them. And uh, he immediately latched on to the Beatles. So go figure, you know. Jesus. Yeah. Well, the uh, the guy that, uh, Colonel Parker, that managed Elvis, uh, he took, as a manager, he took 50%. Yep. Yep. But, you know, again, Elvis could say, yeah, I guess he gets 50%, but he made me the money I've got, you know. And uh, I'm still a multi multi millionaire, and I'm I can't complain about not having enough money. Uh, so you know, but what I want to know is what Parker did with all that money, because you never heard about you know big mansions or big cars. No, I read or, he had a huge gambling problem. Was that it? How much? Oh, how, oh. Much, how much can you gamble? <laughs> That's why he had Elvis play Las Vegas so much. Well, I mean, yeah, well, they had. I think they had Elvis continue to play Vegas because Elvis owed, I think, some taxes. It was a big problem that he had, and um, that was the only way he could earn money in those days. But in the end, all he, it was those concerts that made him money, and uh -huh. he was starting to play, you know, little towns like Biloxi, you know, and places like that. Um, so he was he was playing um, uh, the, the the dives, let's say. So you know, but when you talk about what seven million dollars a show, I mean I, that's that's impressive. Yeah, it's very impressive. Of course, it doesn't. Yeah, you know, I mean I only made twenty five thousand dollars on the Frost Amphitheater. And who do we have there? We had was Ellen DeGeneres on that show? Trying to remember is Bob Rubin, Monty, David Feldman, me, Pearl. Mm -hmm. uh, it was quite. It was a big lineup. I remember that show. And what we did there—that was my—that was my let's give them everything show. What we did is we ran variety acts on that show. There was uh, a guy with giant birds that flew over the audience and things like that. You know, so we didn't just do comedy at that show. But I think it was, well, that was good because you don't want comedy after a while; it's too much. So. We did a second Frost Amphitheater, which was still successful, but not as successful uh, the next year. And uh, that's, we called it the Cavalcade of Comedy. That's what it was called. And um, we, um, uh, you know, um, what am I, where was what was the thought I was trying to get together? Oh, yeah, I think that was the year maybe that Ellen DeGeneres was on the show. Uh, because we, we brought in a lot of different people from outside, too, as well. So, you know. Uh -huh. But uh, do, you don't, do you remember the second show? I wasn't on that one, no. I was on the first one. Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah. I, I saw photographs from that first show. You know. I'd love to see those. Um, it, it, well, I have one. It, you're in it. Uh, with Durst and a couple other people. I can't remember who. I think Sue Murphy. You know? But anyway, anyway. That's uh, that's what we've been, what we were up to. These in kids don't know what a comedy boom was today. Yeah, yeah, these, <laughs> these kids don't know what comedy is, period. Have you seen some of it lately? It's like there's so many people doing it, and it's about 90% is just horrible. Well, because ninety percent of them don't want to be comedians; they want to get that movie deal, you know. So they figure they'll do comedy, they'll get discovered there, and then they'll be hired to do TV and movies and things like that. Um, yeah, it was kind of when we started. There was a lot of people doing that too. They try to get twenty minutes to go to LA and get noticed to get into movies. And uh, yeah, and a lot of people successfully did that. 
you know. Yeah, and it was kind of funny. People like Robin Williams would do a movie, and as soon as he's done, he couldn't wait to get back to stand up. So. Yeah, well, there were people who love stand up. They love doing yeah, it. Yeah, he did. So. Um, uh, who else? Uh, Leno loves stand up. To this day, he. Leno played. loved it, and you got to wonder. God, no one got bigger than Steve Martin, and he got out of it completely. Well, he can't, got out of it because he said, he said by the time he said, I, I did my, I had it my first hour, which was a sensational first hour of comedy. And then I had to come up with the second hour, and the second hour was pretty good. And by the time I did the third hour, I said, I don't have another hour in me, you know, for this. Yeah, he just said, I noticed that, he, I read last year, he, like all these comics, claim they want to do a new hour every year and he said his theory was the best comic has two maybe three hours in them and that's it yeah yeah so i mean that was that was uh he he got out when he felt he didn't have any more comedy in him and uh, that was that's pretty 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 good you know that was a smart thing to do a lot of people aren't that smart they don't know when to cut bait and you know yeah, I saw him in San Francisco for five dollars at the boarding house in 1976. Yeah, the right before he got huge. He got so huge that I saw him out at the Nassau Coliseum, which I don't know how many that held. That, <laughs> you know, that, he was like a rock star then, right? Well, that certainly held more than uh, than Chappelle did. I mean, he wasn't making yeah. the same kind of money only because uh, people paid less for tickets in those days. When you paying what? What did you say the top ticket price was at uh, at Chappelle? Well, the cheapest was two eighty five, and they went up to twelve hundred. Two eighty five, twelve hundred. I I don't know if I I wouldn't pay that to see a comic. Would you? No. I don't have the money to pay that kind of money to a comic. <laughs> no, I I look at Broadway shows. For instance, Broadway shows here are like that. You know. I mean, you were getting up to fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars a ticket for Hamilton at one point. Jesus. Yeah, yeah, you know, Now, uh, uh, let me put it this way, okay? I see going to a Broadway show and paying one hundred and fifty bucks, equitable, because what I'm doing is I'm sitting there and there's a full orchestra, and there's a full cast dancing on stage, and the show is live. And this is an original version of that show. In other words, you're never going to see that exact version again. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You know, so I think that's worth it. Maybe a hundred and fifty dollars. Okay, but I don't see two guys getting up on stage uh, with no sets, no orchestra, nothing uh, for like two eighty-five or what you said is ridiculous. Because they're not giving me my money's worth like a Broadway show does, and uh, and they're Pretty probably incredible. they're probably videotaping the thing anyway, and it'll be on net, 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 Netflix in a couple of weeks, you know. So I mean, yeah. <laughs> what the hell? So anyway, so how's your health? You you uh, you were gonna go to the doctor for your eyes. Are you doing anything about that? I'm waiting for a reschedule. Yeah, and I haven't heard yet. And uh, what are they saying at the office? The coward called again. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I'm somewhere in mid-January. I'm this the hernia is supposed to be done, but uh, that's going to take you. Maybe, out of I'll, maybe take, I'll freak out for the fourth time. That's I don't gonna, know. Well, that one I wouldn't want to have. I mean, that can take no. you. Out, that can take you out of commission for a couple of months. You know. Yeah. I mean, you're not going to get back up on stage a week later with the hernia operation, you know? Yeah, it kind of worries me. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it, yeah, it should. I mean, how bad is the hernia bothering you? It's, it, this it's is, getting pretty this bad. Is, this is what old people talk about, folks, so just <laughs> live with it, okay? <laughs> I mean, so, I mean, um, um, a hernia is, you know, it's it, I, have, I have a hernia, but it doesn't bother me. It's just that lump, you know. Yeah, if it doesn't bother you, you're fine. So. It, you know, occasionally it will act up a little bit. Just a little bit, and then it goes away. Usually um, when you're standing for a long time, it'll act it, up. But. Yeah, uh, but, you know, I, uh, uh, I, I, so I'm, I'm not going to go get the hernia taken care of. 
I mean, even my urologist looked at me and said, oh, you've got a hernia. I said, yeah, it's my friend. You know, I mean. <laughs> yeah, if it's not bothering you, don't mess with it. I think that's what he told me. He said, only if it bothers you, then you do something yeah. about it. Otherwise, you don't. Uh, and uh, it, it really hasn't bothered me that much. I think it bothered me more when it first started, and then uh, then it, it settled in, and uh, you know it's not no real problem. And I can still push it back in and everything, but it doesn't really want to go, but it does. So <laughs> yeah, that's you're lying on the bed trying to push it back in. I do that all the time. Well, no, but that's one of the kind of things that you do. Uh, only when you really need it, when you're really in pain. You know? yeah. Have you been in a lot of pain lately with it? Just uh, usually after I run, it'll be pretty bad. Oh, really? Oh, God. Yeah. I know how you like to run. Yeah. Well, so. you know, you know I, I, uh, I don't run, so I don't know if my hernia would hurt when I run. <laughs> it used to hurt when I would walk or have my belt tightened too tight. And then that'll uh, do it, yeah. Yeah, and then it, uh, then it, then it didn't do anything. What other ailments can we talk about? I've got this problem with my breathing lately. I, I don't understand it entirely, but I've looked up everything. I don't have a cough, okay? And in everything like lung cancer, whatever, cough is a predominant feature, and I can't find anything. It's just my my breathing's just a little weird. You know, um, maybe uh, so is mine. I'm thinking allergies, but it feels like an allergy to me. Yeah. Well, folks, are you, are you enjoying this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's uh, our maladies. <laughs> well, it's not. You know, it's. Uh, I hate to tell you this, folks. I know this is very depressing to a certain segment of my audience, but the fact is. It's going to be like this for you eventually. I mean, I found when I hit 80, I started getting more aches and pains and everything. And now I get out of bed and I crawl to the bathroom, right? And once I'm awake, once I'm awake, it's a little better, you know. Uh, plus, I have this, this uh, uh, neuro not neuropathy, this, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, vertigo, positional vertigo which hasn't bothered me in the last couple of weeks and today and yesterday it started bothering me again. So when I get up out of a bed, I'm like dizzy, okay? So a anyway, you get all these things and you go, now I wanna live to be 100, but what is it gonna feel like at 99? You know, every bone in your body will ache, your positional vertigo will make it impossible for you to stand up, you know? And everybody will come over and wipe the drool from your chin. <laughs> and while no one is more afraid of dying than me, except with the possible exception of you, Larry, uh, yeah. uh, I I don't know that I want to live to get to that point. You know. So, uh, one time uh, scary. on this show, we, you and I should just talk about what is life after death. Is there anything after that? You know? <laughs> I, I, I wonder. I, I always wonder. Um, uh, I have no idea. No, and, and, well, I, I'll, we can talk about that the next time we, uh, next we time, get together. Yeah. We still got a couple of minutes here, though. And uh, so, uh, have you been working? I did. Let's see. I was at the Throckmorton Theater in Mill Valley last week. That was good. So, mm -hmm. yeah. They're finally back. So. Yeah. And, and who's running that now? Uh, the same person, Lucy Mercer, who owns the theater, and uh, she's great. She she's like you. She pays the comics well and treats them well. So, which you're not really used to in comedy. Uh, yeah. Who was it? Uh, remember the comic George Miller? Yeah. He was on he was on Letterman once. He was talking about working the road, and he, he said every comedy club owner is actually Jack Ruby. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, they were, I always felt that they took advantage of the comics, you know, and uh, and I just couldn't. I mean, to begin with, they're not in show business, I am, okay? And so I wasn't going to pay another person in show business below what I would want to get if I were working, you know? 
And that was my, I always, I always believed in playing the comics well. Oh, yeah, we loved doing your shows were great. D- it didn't hurt, you know, and I still made money. What the hell? Everyone made money. It was the way it should be. Everybody had fun. Everybody spent, uh, we did two shows a night, and uh, we everybody went home with a nice bit of change in yeah. their pockets, and uh, I walked home with a nice bit of change in my pocket, and that was good. You know. Yeah, and we had great venues. We had, remember we did the Greek Theater in Berkeley, and uh, yep. I love that the Stone down in uh, Palo Alto. I love that the Keystone. We I love did that a place. lot of stuff there. Hey, listen, I we got to go. Yeah, yeah. Time is a fleeting for all of us. Yes. Thank you so much, Larry. We'll see you next you week. Got it. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye. This is Gabnet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Yeah, there is Bubbles. Uh, good old Bubbles. Good old Bubbles. Yeah, Larry Bubbles. Bubbles Brown. Yeah. Anyway, hello, everybody. Uh, tonight, we seem to be okay. We seem to be doing all right. Uh, a little bit later, after the... the we're going to do a little something different tonight. Uh, you know, we've been having um, uh, Josh Wheeler just do... Uh, Jack's hour uh, once a week. Uh, probably this will be the last time for this year. I don't because I it, it I'm trying to look for an easy way to do it. And last week when we had to go to the uh, 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 another machine and turn it on and get it going and so on, uh, he didn't get very many people calling him. All right, to be honest with you. And I figured today. What we'd do is we wouldn't get rid of our people, but we'd end the show, and then they would stay there on Zoom, and then I would start everything up for the uh, Zoom to go out over Facebook and to record it and so on and so forth, and uh, see how that works, okay? That's the best way I can think of doing it. So anyway, uh, we'll do that tonight uh, towards the end of the show. So, And if you could stick around for Josh, I'd really appreciate it because... uh, He's a great guy, and he does a very intelligent uh, presentation, and I think you should uh, join him, okay? Uh, there are a couple of people here that I don't know, so first let me let the ones I do know on, okay? Now, uh, uh, let me let me ask you guys, is, do you know of uh, Jake Smith? Huh? Not that I know of. Now, do you know, how about Robert? Just plain Robert? Yeah, you know, well, let's just try Robert and see what happens. And I'm going to have to get rid of him really fast. If, uh, I'll cover my eyes since I'm not old enough. Since you're not old enough to do it? Okay, <laughs> let me see here. Um, let me see here. Uh, bu- 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 bum. Okay, so we'll try Robert and see who that is. Okay, here's Robert. Uh, we, we, don't, we don't trust this stuff anymore. Uh, he's not coming. He's not coming on fast enough. He's not coming on fast enough. Uh, he's connecting right now. Is he connecting? I don't yeah, think. Yeah, so he's connecting yeah. to audio now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we're getting close. I don't think. I'm gonna get rid of nope. him. I don't. Tr- I, I don't trust him. Uh, let's see here. Remove. Okay. I'm. I, okay. You, you going? You going yet, guy? Huh? He's let me see here. Him. By the way, let me do this too, so everybody can see what we're doing here. Uh, let me see. Uh, okay, I'm removing him. Okay. He's got a slow internet connection. A slow internet connection? I do. Barely. Hmm. I don't have a slow internet connection. There he's going. Where's Jeff? Jeff, let's see your picture. No. Yeah. Why is that? Go over there to the corner where it says start and stop video. Uh, oh, and that other guy left. Okay, here comes Alan. Okay, here comes Alan. All right. Okay, there's Alan. All righty. Okay. Uh, how y'all doing tonight, by the way? Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Good. You're doing your, have you gotten your Christmas shopping done yet? If you're talking to me, the answer is no. Yeah. How about you, Kevin? Done your Christmas shopping yet? Nope. Uh, uh, Josh, done your Christmas shopping yet? I don't do any, so yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Solves that problem. Yeah. 
you know, so the easy way to do it now, of course, is, um, and, and we've been doing it this way for the last couple of years, you go on to, uh, you go on to uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, Amazon, Amazon. And, and shop there. And they yep. said that this year you can actually wait till the last minute, like the 24th of January uh, of December, and you'll get it on the next day. Not where I live. Yeah, well, really. Good luck where I live. Too. Oh, really? Because they say that a lot of their, uh, what do you call it, their warehouses, their distribution sites are really close, and they have these one-day ones that they would start using at that point, so... I don't know. That's what they said on the news. Otherwise, I don't care. I don't know. that it's, it's something the Goyim do. And I... In New York, they probably got a lot of them, but out here, yeah. we're still... Yeah. Jeff, what's your problem? I don't know. I don't have a face anymore. You don't have a face. I hate when that happens. <laughs> Go over to, all the way to the left of your, uh, of, your, of your Zoom, and it says start video, stop video. See that? How about this? Hmm? Hmm. Hmm. Well, can you hear me? I can hear you, but all we get is your name up there, you know, so. Well, that's nice. Hmm. And that's more my face. Maybe this is... Hmm. There you so go. That, what did you do? You what did you do? I saw something that had a click on it. And I pressed on it and it disappeared. But now, <laughs> no. no, you're fine. I see myself, but you don't see me, do you? Yeah, we see you. You do? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're fine. You're good to go. Terrific. Okay, right. well, we got Jeff on tonight, so thank you very much for being here, and we'll see you next week. All right, I can go now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so a little bit later, uh, 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 Josh will take over the show at midnight, but what's going to happen is we will leave the Zoom open and everything uh, so that you can continue if you want to continue, and uh, then Josh will do, uh, do an hour's worth of presentation. But what we'll do is we'll sign off this show. I'll turn off all the things that are this show, okay? And then uh, we're going to uh, go... Uh, uh, I'm just going to have to do a few little things, uh, and then we can just start the program with uh, with Josh. See if it's easier this way than the other way. And then I'll go into another room and do all the posting of stuff I have to post and so on. So anyway, just wanted you to know that. So uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, well, we well, don't touch anything, Jeff. <laughs> But I can't, I can't see you guys. What? You can't see us? No. Really? <laughs> I'll wave. Here, does that work? What would, what would, what would it be the reason he couldn't see us? Yeah, I got it. You forgot to turn the monitor on? What, what did you do? D tell us, because I'd like to know, so I can tell you next know. time to do it. I, st I looked at your picture. Yeah, and that, that and, made your machine go crazy. Yeah. But it was only a small picture, huh. and I clicked on it, and then your 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 full size is there, and I can see everybody. Well, what you can do, small. what people can do, I don't know. I never do that here. I think is I if I click on you, okay, I think if I click on you, then you get larger. Is what I think happens, uh, but I may be wrong. Yeah. Yeah. But, Anyway. If I go here, you know, there's too many questions. Yeah, that's enough it. of that. <laughs> that does not make. There's too many questions. I don't touch it. It doesn't make for interesting programming. You know. Uh, let me <coughs> here. Let me just, just start that so I see that everything's running good. Yeah, everything looks good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, anyway, uh, no, I uh, I think everybody kind of is sh shops using Amazon and stuff now. It, oh yeah. Do, do any of you go to stores for shopping for this time of year? No. No. <laughs> well, I don't want your an answer from you because you're just the most contrary, uh, uh, annoying person I know, and so you wouldn't uh, you wouldn't go through the normal sources, but you use Amazon, right? Hello. Who are you talking to? Alan. 
Oh, we well, didn't say Alan. Well, I said, said the said annoying Josh. person. You should oh, know yeah, that immediately. It sounded like you were talking about Josh, but the annoying person sounded like me. Oh, I use Amazon. Yes. Oh, okay. Good. All right. Yes, thank you. Okay. Because I, I, you know, Sorry. I... Sorry. I'm lazy. I, I, I'll change my name to the annoying one. But I, I, I sat down with Marjorie last night, and I said, dear, you have to understand, I don't do well at buying gifts, okay? Uh, you know, because I don't know what to buy people. You know, like, I probably would know what to buy Alan. I probably know what to buy Kevin, because we're guys, and I could just, I don't know. Hell, if I just... Amazon you a football or something, you'll probably be happy, you know. <laughs> but, you know, women have always been very hard for me to shop for. Unless they had some kind of, you know, weird, wonderful thing, like they love perfume a lot, you know, and then I go out Talk and get them some Kevin perfume. and then said women are hard to shop for? What? Never mind. I, I was lost. You were talking about Kevin, and then your next well, line I just was... find it difficult to shop. Okay. You know, because... What what the hell is that? What was that that you held up, Jeff? Oh, that was my hand. Oh, your hand. Oh, it looked like that, a... That, sorry. I hate to say this. It looked like a dildo. Try it again. Uh, oh, there. Enjoy it. Was it? I was just, <laughs> your thumb was really big. That was it. Anyway, so, you know... Um, so, uh, I don't know what to, I just don't know what to get this time of year. I, I just don't know what the, you know, what, I, I don't know how to buy for Marjorie. You cash know? always works. No, cash doesn't. She, I told her, I said, look, why don't I just get you an Amazon <laughs> gift card for like 500 bucks? You can go out on there and, and, and have the time of your life. Okay. Right. And, and then I will not feel guilty. No, I want you to buy me something. Well, geez almighty, I don't know what to right. buy her. I'll give you a suggestion. What? Buy her a book. Does she like books? Oh, she loves books, but I don't know what she reads. Sober. You can probably go in the bedroom oh. or in the office and look and see what she Brian reads. tonight is joining us as Sober Brian. Uh, because last night, Brian came on our truncated show. Oh, this is the sober one. Oh, I see. Okay. The other Brian came on. Would we say he was drunk? We oh, say yeah. he'd been drinking. I, I mean, literally, I was afraid he, I'm, I was afraid he would, like, uh, damage himself permanently. Just using, bathtub, just using Zoom. Yeah, bathtub Brian. Okay. God. But he was, he was a little in the cups last night. It was kind of funny. Then he fell asleep. Right, he got in bed and fell asleep. And, you know, I'm a little tired this time of night, and I don't like to see that. You know, it takes all the energy out of me watching somebody sleeping. So my nose is itching tonight. And then I've had, a, I've, had, I've had what I thought was a cold today. Oh, it was terrible. Anyway, where was I? Again, gifts. I don't know, you know. Yeah, you say get her a book. I don't. Then I'll get her a book, and she says, "I don't read this crap," you know. So I don't. I, you know, I. And, and then if I go and buy her jewelry, she go, oh, "Well, this isn't the kind of jewelry I like." But I said, "Suppose I buy you jewelry you don't like." She says, "Well, I can always take it down to the uh, the place you bought it, and I can get the money back for it or trade it for something else." And I said, "That's not the idea of gift giving." The idea of gift giving is I see something I think you will like, I give it to you, and even if you can't stand it, you wear it, okay, <laughs> you know? Get her some tennis racket earrings. She would, <laughs> she, she would kill me if I did that. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Excuse diamond me. tennis racket earrings. A diamond, di <laughs> what do they used to have? Didn't they have those tennis bracelets or something? They call them, did they call them tennis yeah, they're, bracelets? they're all diamond. They go all over. Yeah, I always thought they were stupid, you know? And Why I, do they call them tennis bracelets? I don't know, because you don't play tennis. Mm. You wear them playing tennis? I don't think so. I bought so. one for my wife before we got married, and she handed it back to me. See? See? That's what I'm talking about. Man, she said, go get me a wedding ring. <laughs> yeah. ah. Ah. Well, I went, ah, shit, I screwed that one up. <laughs> Yeah. 
I mean, I know what to give my mother for her for for, for the holidays is a tombstone. That would be a very nice thing if I did that. <laughs> I always feel, I'm starting to feel guilty about that, and I don't have a tombstone for my mother. Uh, people say, "How could you do that?" Well, I lived in New York, and the tombs the the grave was in California, and I haven't been able to you know. And I probably should have bought it like 15 years ago when she died because they were probably cheaper then. You know. How much are tombstones now? Anybody know? Yeah, you, none of you have had to buy well, you had well, to, well, you had to buy a tombstone recently, didn't you? Last week. Yeah, yeah. but I didn't buy it. How much, <coughs> how much they run? I mean. We're, we're, uh, we're trying to, well, we're trying to, fit, well, because he's a veteran, we don't have to buy it, so. Oh, I see. Okay. But didn't you have to buy one for your mother when she died? Uh, Yeah, but you know what? I don't remember what it was. I think it was a... Well, because it was my dad. We put her on my dad's and my grandfather's, so we just had it... <coughs> it's been a, in the family, so we just had her engraved on the side of it. Yeah, well, I, I, I mean, you found room for her on the to tombstone? Yeah, it's a big one, and it's, you know, one of them big fat ones with the and it's got two sides of it filled and it still has another side to go well my father has a tombstone and i always remembered it as being a big tombstone but i was a kid when they put it up so to me it looked big when yeah. i went out to finally see it it was like about this size you know and uh so i figured i couldn't do that so what i figured i would do is i'd maybe get one tombstone and spread it across the two graves Right, and then you know have it say, Schwarzman. Here lies uh, uh, Alexander and uh, Alexander and uh, 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 what was my name? Can't remember. Uh, 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 Alexander and Ruth Schwarzman. Yeah. <laughs> and 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 uh, then under it in big letters, uh, the parents of Alex Bennett. You know, yeah. So. And my 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 father-in-law just passed away last Friday, and he's getting all the stuff through the veterans. Oh, okay. So he just got a. They just got a case number day before yesterday, so they're they're taking care of everything. You they know, do the whole the whole bit. Technically, I'm a veteran. You, you can still do your. You could get that taken care of. Really? Just because yep. I served for two lousy years in Hollywood? Yep. Yep. Why? You just contact the national national um, well, Mar cemetery. Marjorie was checking into it, and she said there are a lot of benefits I can get as a as a um, absolutely as yeah. a veteran. Uh, he was in the Air Force, and he uh, we're going to put him into the uh, national cemetery in <laughs> Arizona, Phoenix. Really? Well, I was a uh, all taken uh, care of, and all you need to do is call the national cemetery, uh, have your discharge papers, mm -hmm. and They'll set you up with a case number and set you up with everything. Well, I said I was. Uh, what I what I what I say? I, I technically am a Vietnam vet. There you go. <laughs> I made it under the wire by about three days because the Gulf of Tonkin took place, and then we went to war technically against Vietnam. Then you're taken care and of. And so I'm I'm there for about three days. I was a Vietnam. Vet. All you need. Yeah. As long as you're enlisted, you're mm. taken care of. Yeah. 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 So you ought to look into it. Yeah, I should look into it. There are other things benefits you can get. You know, if I want to buy a house, you know, I get. Yep. They pay your attorney's fees on this rental thing. Yeah, really? Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> I don't know. Dream on. The one thing you do have to take care of is, you know, cremation or whatever you do before that. And that's what he'd take care of. He had bought, a, you know, the insurance for all that stuff about 10 years ago. So See, luckily, that was all taken care of. It's weird. I don't want to be, I don't want to be cremated because I don't want to be turned to a bunch of ashes. But on the other hand, oh. I'm, I have uh, claustrophobia and I don't want to be buried. So yeah, what, what's, just the, end what's up the answer here? Just stuff me and put me up in the corner somewhere. Or? One of those wood chippers. No, actually, I think. Well, you see, what can happen? is uh i can uh, yeah no i can i'm i'm thinking about it i uh i don't want to be cremated and i don't want to be buried how about one of well those above ground mausoleums sure 
Huh? With a, with, a lot, with, a, with a lot of room. You'll get attacked with, by maggots. So with a lot matter. of room in it. You know that I went to the, uh, the you know, the in New, New Orleans, they bury everybody above ground because if they went down six feet, water would come up. Okay? <laughs> yeah. So that's why they bury them above ground in these mausoleums. And they have a thing. I can't remember what it's called, but it's a bag. And what happens is you go to a one of these things and there are like 20 people in this mausoleum. And you go, well, how do they do that? Well, what well, happens as the bones, as they get down to just bone, right? They take them and put them in a bag and put them in there, keep them in there. And then they just move the new guy in and let him deteriorate for a while. Mm. Yeah. So, and nice. there's a name for that bag. I can't remember what it's called now. But, uh, bone bag. Bone bags. Yeah, right. Hey, bone Patrick, bag. we haven't seen you on this program for a while. How you doing? Well, I'm still paralyzed, so. Jeez, is that you going to stop with that already? I know you're just doing it for the sympathy. <laughs> I mean, wh when are you going to get up off your ass and do something about it? <laughs> there's, a, there's pills for that, you know. Why don't you just go get pills for that shit? Donald Trump sending him. He gets some of his trading cards with it. Yeah, that's a new thing, his uh, NFTs. Yeah. Yeah, I bought some yesterday. Non you spent I'm, waiting, I'm, you I'm waiting for them in the mail. Yeah. You, you, sp you, spent, you spent on uh, 99 bucks for those? Yeah, and they're coming in the mail any time now. Does he really right. think that we can even take him seriously any longer once he started with that bullshit? The, what news, a fuck the news said that he's. But they say they said that I could get a dinner with him and Ye. So I figured Maybe. that'd be well, they, they, what happens is if you go for these NFTs, they have prizes that are going along with them, and they are like dinner with the Trumps. Yeah. Uh, I would say my prize would be no dinner with the Trumps. Yes. You know what, uh, you know what an NFT is? No, no fucking tokens. No, no fucking tokens. Yes, uh, 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 Patrick. Um, honestly, I was talking to uh, Josh and Kevin about this. I think what he's doing with the cards is brilliant because those digital cards are around in sports there's star wars there's star trek there's the pokemon mm -hmm. card mm -hmm. yeah. and they're all digital and people are buying them and you can find that shit on ebay people are buying digital fucking images on ebay for big money and you know what i think donald trump is fucking brilliant for doing it because if people are gonna buy it sell it i mean that that I would. Okay. I okay. Pictures. Okay. Wait a minute. I will go to I will go to two other people who are your friends, and companion, and 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 my friends as well who talk with us every week uh, on another thing that we do with each other. It's, it sounds like we play with each other, you know. But anyway, yeah. uh, uh, but I ask them, do you think that an NFT from Donald Trump say? Ten years down the line, will be worth anything? No. Which might be part of Trump's brilliance in the matter, because <laughs> because got exactly you, right. motherfucker, didn't we? You know, it'll be worth nothing. So, congratulations to the dipshit. You know what? Some hillbilly down in in the southern Georgia will buy it for four hundred bucks. Yeah. And China next year will start making them for five dollars and ninety nine cents. But that, but that's the brilliance of it, because it's like these Star Wars cards and these baseball cards that are digital. In ten years, that technology may not be around. And they'll still and buy it. And you bought it a a Thai Cobb digital card for let's say. Four hundred dollars, and it, it were only <laughs> ten of them made. Well, great, you got it on your fucking iPhone fourteen today. Yeah. The iPhone seventeen in five years may and not. The only thing that's real about it is the fucking money you paid for it. That's correct. And that's and that's brilliant. Now, now on, but oh, go ahead. 
Uh, that, that, that'd be like buying a bunch of laser discs. <laughs> well, it'd be more like I, buying hey, the stop, laser Juan, itself. Stop it. I owned about 300 of those goddamn <laughs> things at one point. Yeah, now you can't play them anywhere, see? Yeah. I kept one machine. It's in storage. Oh, really? I, I had it at the end. I it's it's like out. buying a light beam. I had a flip now, out. outside of that point that Patrick made, and I mean, I agree, mm -hmm. if he can, he's been selling his name his whole life. So this is just the next step in getting people to give him money. So that's what he's going to do. Okay. But to your point, I mean, does anyone want to vote for a person who's literally, I mean, who sells their self? I mean, it's, it's like, dressed up as a you want to be man. president of the United States again. And you're out here, you know, selling pictures of yourself and, uh, these NFT, I mean, there are actual, you know, athletes and things who won't even do that. You know, I mean, he's like the guy who has to endorse everything. And, you know, I mean, he's these guys that have billions of dollars who do TV commercials for like a local car dealership or something. It's let's, like, what for a moment, let's, for, let's for a moment allow ourselves to absorb, absorb the fact that this guy is reputedly, supposedly, a billionaire. Mm. How much money at 99 bucks a piece is he going to make? Yeah. Out of, is he going to even make, is he going to make a billion dollars? I don't think no. so. Is he gonna I don't make, know how many they sold. Is he going to make 100 million? I'd be surprised if he sold as many of those as it appears Netflix is selling of commercials on their yeah. commercials system now. Yeah, it, I, I mean, I heard that it rolled out in one of his major announcement tomorrow. Yeah, it's a major you know, announcement tomorrow. Social media storms, and I have to be going to a drive through to get some lunch, and I, the Michael Smirconis show was playing on Sirius, you know, POTUS or whatever. Yeah. And they came on there, and his producer person gave him the breaking news, what the big announcement was. And when she gave it to him, I mean, he had the same reaction you do. You know, this person now expects us to take him seriously after this? Yeah. What? You know? And he's he's always played off as, like, this independent-minded, you know, mm -hmm. person who will, you know, just come on the air and talk both, you know. And that's what his reaction is. What? Well, let's talk to the guy who probably knows more about non-fungible tokens than anybody on this panel, and that would be Tony. I used to make slugs, Alex, and get away with it. I found them. <laughs> what do you mean? I made them perfect. What do you mean slugs? My grandfather, I found in my garage. He had like. No, that's not metal. what a non-fungible token is. I was playing Pac-Man and Asteroids for nothing. And then no, no, getting no, that, no, 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 no. That's oh, you mean like the cards himself? The yes, entries? yes, the oh, digital okay. cards. I think those are, I, I'm not into it. And me and Shucky, I have to visit him soon. We were talking about that. It's such, it's so bogus. They're doing sports cards with this now. They had like some old Yankees. My brother, you know who was pushing it, Alex? Who's the guy on, uh, the guy who does CNN Mad Money? What's his name? Oh, Kramer. Uh, Jim, Jim Kramer. Jim Kramer. He was Kramer. he was discussing the company once. My brother called me from work in the city, and he I said, "What is that?" He was pushing it a lot. I don't know if it's publicly. Uh, he pushes a lot of crap, you know. Yeah, I think it's all bullshit. I would never buy anything digital, never. Oh, only a comic to read or a magazine or something, a book. Would I buy anything digital? Well, I mean, there's stuff you can get digitally. Like yes. a, yeah, like I, it have to be something accurate, but nothing like a card that I have to, like I saw the card of Trump. I thought it was bullshit. He's dressed like Superman. I mean, it's so, it's so stupid, really. I mean, to think I was even remotely going to vote for this guy, yeah, my mother would have wanted me. Come on, I couldn't do it. Uh, I'm it's typically like a not a big fan Ooh, jo of Josh. I'm, I'm not usually into money that I have to buy. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, but sense. you're not you're even like, buying money. What you're doing you're not is, is you're money? buying terrible artwork of a terribly horrible, ugly, fat pig. Well, you're buying yeah. pixels. Hmm? You're buying pixels. <laughs> yeah, Isn't this I don't kind of like Bitcoin, except for it's a picture. Well, of I think I think right now is a bad time for him to be trying to sell NFTs after this whole Bitcoin thing mm -hmm. that's been going down the last mm -hmm. couple of weeks. 
See, if I'm going to buy some, I have to have it physically in my hands that I can sell well, that's, it. That's that. It, it, it. I don't think but, that's uh, I don't think that's worth anything either, but it is worth something. It is worth something to somebody like Shecky. How, how much? How much? Like, like for instance, that's rated an eight point five, which 8. is pretty 5. pretty good, right? Yeah, from nineteen sixty eight. Uh, I sold this one for a hundred bucks to somebody. I have to pack it up. Really, a hundred bucks for that? Hundred dollars. How much? I gave you, him free shipping. How much did you pay for it? I paid actually more to grade the book. Twenty dollars to grade it more than what it cost me. It cost me like five dollars. Oh, you can book. actually do grading yourself. I can grade myself and sell the comic raw, but I I was kind of looking at the comic and I figured, oh, this is worth putting twenty dollars in. Explain my explain the grading for people who don't know what grading is. Okay, I go by Overstreet. It's a price grab that's been around forever, right? So when I look at a book, it's a ten point scale by increments of five. And, and, so this, say, and by the way, a 10 would be like a perfect... Yeah, no a 10 is a gem. It, yeah, that's like... I don't even know if that, that hardly even exists, really. But it does. I mean, because it, if something's old enough, it's got a little maybe bent oh, page yeah. or it turned a little yellow or, you know, the inks didn't stay as well as they should. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, to get a 10 would be almost impossible. Is this but, like coin grading? Tony? Similar, yeah. but I'm not familiar with the coin mm -hmm. grading, but they do that too. So what I would do is to make a long story short, say I have a pile of books I, I have in my box. Mm -hmm. I'll pull them out, separate it by the, the title. This was a title by Spider-Man. And then I'll look at them and say, okay, I think this is going to grade. I kind of know how they grade this company. Mm -hmm. So if I think it's going to grade that I can actually make more money than selling it graded than raw, which mm -hmm. is not in a plastic, to get mm -hmm. a multiple, mm -hmm. then I'll say, you know what? I'll put this aside. I'm going to send this out there to an orc, to the grading house. Now, if I felt it wasn't going to grade above a certain grade, I'd sell it raw there and then put a certain price for it. Like, I wouldn't put $20 into it. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. So, now, here's my question, though. Uh, that, who graded that one? This one was graded by a small company called PGX. I don't want to kind of give the company out, but not CGC. They're a smaller company. I'm at CGC. I mean, it, what, who's the best grader? Who's the, who's the gold standard grader? The gold standard for auction houses is, is CGC. Mm -hmm. Everybody else is like running a long distance. And how do, how do they get that reputation? Just because they grade perfectly, they grade correctly? Well, this is where Shecky and me have many discussions where I pick his brain. He had a very good point. He says, and I'll tell you why. They were the first ones on the market. Mm -hmm. And I won't drop a name, but they did have a guy who in New York circles, Alex, in the comic community, he's like really great at grading books and checking for restored books. And they hired him to be their head grader. So he gave them reputation right off the bat. Yeah. He's a great guy. So he's honest, really. He's always been around the hobby. Kind of like, like say, they, uh, like, a, like a really popular radio guy. He's like that for comics. I, I can't go in and like pay somebody to give me a good rating. No, I wish I could, but you know, we, I didn't we say to... you. I I know you wouldn't be that dishonest, would you, Tony? No, I'm very honest. I would oh, never try to rob anybody. No, yeah, of course not. But I just wanted people to know what this grading is all about. And so, how would you grade the latest uh, Donald Trump uh, superhero card? I mean, Alex, how do you even think I had a fall on my head? I know I was joking with that. Shaking guy, man, I was. Listen. I can never take this guy seriously. He's a, he just look is he that desperate to make money? Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 I actually yeah. feel ashamed that I think. Uh, you know what I would love to see? Those goddamn tax returns. They are horrible looking, so they're cheap. What? The he hates China, China, but they're probably made in China. No, wait, wait a minute. Hold on a second. What looks cheap? I, I, are you referring to the... Uh, the caps oh, that they're so oh, like see. tilted. They look like my uncle's caps from China. Oh, on they the look. Company. They look like the one Elmer Fudd wears. It's kind yeah, of too square. Oh, yeah, there. Tony, didn't like you? That? Didn't you? Didn't you buy a bunch of Trump comics? Yeah, you know why? And I'll tell you why, Alex. Ah, <laughs> you these off these the stupid Trump people. I grade if I I will not sell a Trump book raw. If I grade that book for fourteen dollars, I sold a book for almost two hundred dollars in a nine eight, and I left. I wouldn't even wipe my ass with it. Somebody paid you? Yeah. yeah. It's to... a ripoff of the Incredible Hulk, and he, they got him. The artist is great. By the way, I don't, a... by the way I don't care yeah. about any of you and how much cool. money any of you have. This guy probably has more money than the rest of us. Maybe. I have a lot of, I have a lot of books. That's what I do have. In case I drop dead, I'll leave you right? something. 
No, but these aren't like these aren't books like that you loved and you no. bought. I and have these, books that no, are my personal are, collection are that aren't for sale. These are ones that you bought a hundred of and then put in. Yeah, a, I don't care about those books. But my Batman from nineteen fifty something, that's my personal. Yeah, but book, you could put yeah, but you could put you bought like a hundred or something and then you yeah, put, I bought the, multiples, you put it like in the basement for fifteen years and then you pull it out and start selling them like slowly so they can keep Yes. Paying. Yeah, you haven't pegged hundred percent, Alex. I like that. Well, yeah, everything is organized and very meticulous of everything. And you, and you buy collections, right? You buy Yeah, small collections if I can afford it. Yeah, I'll pick what I want. Yeah. Or but when stores go out. But you got a lot of money. I have a lot of money tucked away in different places, really. That's where when the market goes down, I go crazy. Where I get S- Switzerland and Zimbabwe? What, what do you mean? You got no. Cayman Islands. Cayman no, Islands. I, I, I invest in stock. I like Microsoft. Oh, so you didn't I'm buy Bitcoin, huh? No, no. <laughs> I, I'll buy Bill Gates. I'll buy Microsoft and Apple. Not. I tell what, I tell Shecky, what is Bitcoin? He says, I don't even know what it is. I don't I, know what it is. I can't figure it out. Can you explain this to well, me? Well, let's go to the one guy here who knows what Bitcoin is, Patrick. Go ahead, Patrick. Explain it to us. I gotta go to the bathroom in a second. Uh, they're, they're coins, and then you cut them up into mm. little bits, <laughs> and then you got coins. Yeah, uh, that's cute. And that's a great explanation. People, you charge people an exorbitant amount of money, and you tell them nothing. the value of that little bit of the coin you just cut up, mm-hmm. and then they're stupid, and they pay you. And then you put that money offshore, and then you rake in billions and billions and billions of dollars, and then you get arrested when you're in the Bahamas, and then you can't testify in front of Maxine Waters (laughs) so she can save her own ass, and all with a donation that that idiot sent her. And then her big yap can be shut up too, because I didn't want to hear her dumb ass talk. Wait a minute, Maxine Waters took big Bitcoin? She took money from that asshole who was selling the Bitcoin. Mr. Bitcoin, yeah. 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 So that Bitcoin, little bits of coins, and you find suckers to buy them. Yeah. You donate to Democratic causes, and then you get arrested and. At the end of your life. Oh, like and it's no it, you know, it's our bad luck. He's a Democrat. Yeah. Okay. He's, I don't really know that he is. He, I don't know that he is. He, he yeah, gave the same amount of money to Republican lawmakers too. Yeah. He, but he oh, did sure. not. For the majority were Democrats, and I will keep <laughs> repeating that forever and ever and ever and ever. All right. <laughs> well, Democrat because we know how we know how you Republicans like to lie. He's yeah, a he Democrat. Did, uh, <laughs> to be a Republican. He did not. He did not disclose it publicly but until later but there is an interview tape with him uh that i heard played last week when i was traveling where he said i gave the same amount of money to to both parties and they asked why he said because i didn't want anyone to know that i gave to republican politicians because the liberal media would uh go cray cray on me for that and i didn't want to deal with it so i mean he, you know he's uh well a lot of places all, a lot of all around a little a lot of companies uh, hedge their bets, shall we say, by during yeah. a presidential election giving money to both parties and usually an yeah. equal amount. You know, mm-hmm. um, yeah. but uh, my anyway. company. I mean, I don't like him either way. I what just, were you saying, Patrick? My the company I used to work for, we we did that because we were a trade association and we had to donate to both parties because we were lobbying for various things and in order to lobby you got to keep both sides happy so yeah yeah so uh, yeah but anyway so uh, let's see here yeah yeah that's the big all off jeff what take it all off jeff (laughs) that's right where's he going huh where are you are you are you in connecticut right now jeff No, I'm in Massachusetts. In Massachusetts, oh, oh. yeah, what? my daughter's house. Oh, I see. Yeah, I watched. Uh, I I saw basketball last night. Are you sort of Celtics or home? My 15 year old is becoming a famous basketball player. Oh, really? Wow. In high school. Oh, in high school. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Today we watched. Hey. Uh, I. I, I sh- shouldn't say this because I shouldn't have really 
tell you I watched it, but I saw The Fablemans today. Any good? Um, Shecky saw it because the Academy of Screeners are out. And um, he didn't like it. He thought it was kind of dull. I, I liked it. I thought it was okay. I didn't think it was great. I think there were some great performances in it, but I didn't think it was it was great. I know people know what we're talking about. This is the movie Steven Spielberg's done about basically about his family and growing up and becoming yeah, a filmmaker, you mm-hmm. know. And uh, it, it it it's it's a good it's a good picture. It's just not a great picture. Okay, you know. So. That's that's that. Uh, oh, I was thinking about a, a gift for your wife. Well, <laughs> really? Then you send right. it to her. You know, what? <laughs> no, what? no, no, no. Why don't you take it to a theater in uh, New York? A show. Well, I, I think I mentioned that to her, and she wasn't interested either. She said, <laughs> you should take me to the theater anyway during the year. I go, yeah. <laughs> okay, because she usually make, buys the theater tickets, and we go to the theater. Yeah. So, and she's taken me to some pretty good shows too, you know. However, she did get one seat once. She figured she has her, her girlfriends come in once a year, and they all get together and they buy theater tickets to go see a show. So mm-hmm. she was in charge of buying the tickets, and she bought one for me as well. And um, she went to buy the tickets and they said well we can give you the cheaper tickets if you want an obstructed view but you have you're in the first row oh and so she went well how bad could the first row be you know oh, yeah. and, and this, this uh this was um looking uh, up uh, uh, what was it uh, 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 to kill a mockingbird oh i'm reading the book i'm almost done with it Oh, I'm not I talking think, about the book. I'm talking about the goddamn play. He just killed himself in the book. I was like, so they you, shot you're him. You're ready to make me kill myself. I anyway. know. How did they send him to jail? He had a bum arm. I couldn't believe it in the book. Well, you know why. A mockingbird had a bum arm? Yeah. No, he didn't do that. Yeah. I was anyway, just, anyway. Anyway, yeah. Go ahead. Well, now everybody's forgotten the lead up to the story, including <laughs> me. Right. No, well, so she, she, get, she gets show. a seat. They was an obstruct, obstructed view, but it's in the first row, and it's not much of an obstruction. You know what the oh, obstruction yeah. was? At the end what? of the stage, they got a guy who plays a banjo. That's it? Yeah, but we were sitting right in front of him. They couldn't see anything on the stage. Oh, oh shit. Man. Yeah. Really? So I heard To Kill a Mockingbird, and it was a pretty good play. Who played Atticus? Do you remember, Alex? Or no? Yeah, what's his name? The guy who was on, uh, did that TV show Newsroom. Uh, the guy with the banjo. Uh, uh, Jeff, Jeff Daniels. Daniels. Jeff Daniels. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But, you know, it was, it was, anyway, it was written by, uh, the play was written by Aaron Sorkin. Uh, yes, uh, yes. Uh, you know, I like I, I like Patrick's, Patrick's explanation of what Bitcoin is. That was cute. That's maybe the best uh, description uh, we've got yes. in a long time. Yeah, that that was clever. Yeah, but I, we, invest, we, I invest in stocks too, and but I I, I can't explain Bitcoin. Well, you I'm know, they they back. do this whole thing about bit mining. <laughs> if you have a computer, you can bit mine. I what minor. is that? I, yeah. Do I go get, get a little hat with a lamp on it? And go it was a video game, Minor 2049. I used to play <laughs> I, mean, I think it's all a racket. I'm telling you, it's a, it's a Ponzi scheme. Well, wait a minute. Guess what? What? It's Adrian. Oh, it's be good. Who's hiding behind <laughs> Dad. Oh, I won't say nothing crazy about the Jamaican she, guy. Let, 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 hi, Adrian. How are you? Hey, come on out and say hi to us. <laughs> uh, uh, say hi or bye. this comment. Say hi or bye. Would she be upset if I just said she's silly? No, you know something? Yes. Does she get prettier? I'm not gonna. You're very ugly. Okay. Yeah, you just make her sound like a pervert. Yeah. No, but it, it, isn't she? It, that's. I wish say I had hi. a child that that was. You got to be just really. Every day she blossoms. Yeah. You know. Yeah, she has a Christmas recital tomorrow. It really? Oh boy! Yeah. Oh, four, boy. four, four dances, two, two shows. 
Wow. I'm going to be up your way. And, and we didn't get tickets? What's up with that? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, what do you need? This is my time. My time. <laughs> my time. <laughs> my time. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> This is a grown-up time. Mm -hmm. My time. Not seven-year-old time. It's my time. <laughs> she has makeup on, also. She does. She had. It looked like she had something on. Uh, yeah. How old is she now? Seven. You're five? Are you five now? No. Oh. <laughs> she's seven. Seven. She's seven, and she's like, yeah, she's. Right Wasn't now. she like four years old when she first showed up on this program? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's just before COVID. Right when COVID was hitting. Yeah. You, you don't you don't need to film anything of her. Uh, all she got to do is look at all the old uh, Ramble shows. Yeah. Growing up. Yeah, but I can yeah. do I can do a montage of her growing up. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. And me going old. So so what is the age at which a father says, "Okay, kid, it's okay to wear lipstick"? I don't uh, know. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> No, but I mean, what, uh, who else here has a daughter? Oh, okay. okay. How about you, Kevin? How? What age? What age did you wear lipstick? <laughs> Seven. Uh, my daughter does not wear makeup. Very little. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? I know, but for you dance. Just, yeah for dance. Yes, I wear everything for dance. She plays a horn, so probably not good for it. Uh, <laughs> makes a mess on the end of the thing that you stick up okay. against the mouth. Bye. Bye bye. Okay, you want to be grounded? Oh. Yeah. Thanks. Bye. We're going to be up your way tomorrow, Brian. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, it will be at Christmas in the park in uh, Eastridge. What's she what doing? That? Eating the food you were eating? Yeah, mm -hmm. just apples. Oh, okay. Oh, apples. <laughs> <laughs> God, uh, you know something? The day's going to come where you can't even lift her, okay? Oh, me, my back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But anyway, you're very, Nothing, uh, you're very lucky, Brian. She is a, you know, lovely, <laughs> lovely. And as I say. Yeah, Uncle sorry. Alex, you see her at this time only, okay? Just like the grandparents, right? No, but oh, I'm, yeah. saying, oh, yeah. I'm saying keep Sorry, the baseball great. bat by the door, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and teacher, the this sentence you have to talk to my father first. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. But you have to wait till he gets home from prison. <laughs> <laughs> he shot my last boyfriend. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. By the way. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's see. I don't have any kids. Brian, uh, uh, brother, uh, Alan doesn't have any kids. Josh doesn't have any kids. So, uh, you know, oh, and Tony does that. I don't even have a cross street in Tony has a whole clan. It, it would, right. there's a requirement I, I, for I, having. I only eight. have one daughter, but I have four granddaughters. Oh, really? Yeah, well, Tony, yeah. there's a requirement, you know, for having kids, and that is you have to have sex first. I tell you, I made a friend in, in, in uh, radiation in Jamaica, man. You told me. You told us. You told us now he told me today. You know what happened? We, he's telling me again. I don't know why he confides in me. Like, mm. there, there aren't any girls to pick up. In yeah, well, he's married this guy, and he says I can't have sex with my wife, but yet he has a girlfriend now. He tells me on the side, the wife is calling him in the in the in the place when we're getting ready to leave. So aren't you going to answer the phone? No. Well, you're gonna go home. I gotta get. I said, it's like a soap opera in this place. I said, leave it. He doesn't leave me alone. He told me his brother. He's a bullshit throw, Alex. You know what he told me? His brother was a chef for Mick Jagger. Give me a break. Come on. I think he wants to climb in bed with you, Tony. No, he. I'm telling you, he's a mess. This guy. I feel bad for him. His prostate's like twice, like it's super enlarged. He's telling me his this prostate, is too much. Yeah. Oh, whatever. Well, I hope he's okay. Uh, uh, I'm gonna do it. Yeah. Whatever story he tells. But he's me, yeah. I mean, about you. So are, are you glowing yet? Uh, not really. I felt a little tired this afternoon, to tell you the truth. Not too bad though. How many days are you running. into this now? Sixteen, something like that. Uh, this is halfway through three weeks. Really? Well, it wasn't that tired. I mean, you don't do it on the weekends, right? No, they gave me off on Saturday from the. Uh, they said, see you Monday, Tony. I said, where else am I going to back you yeah, I, I thought, I, I thought that when I got my fifth thing and it was the last one 
that they'd give yeah. me some kind of, I don't know, a little plaque or a little award or something, and they, nothing. Mm. Nothing. Did they give you something to hold? Like I said, they gave me, like, when I lay down a thing, they gave me, like, a little Oh, thing yeah, yeah, it's a thing. Yeah, you just hold I it. thought it was, like, my stretch well, I was going to take it home. It, oh, it's really, I think, to keep you from, like, moving a lot. Because if yeah, because I kind of use it with my fingers. you pull on this thing, you just have something to, you know, you can't move that much. Yeah, I kind of say it's nice and straight. She said. Yeah, it, 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 it wasn't like they, like they strap you down to it or anything. You know. Yeah, she says she's doing good, Tony. I'm not doing anything. I got my eyes closed listening to today. They had a Christmas music on there. They actually had Sirius XM on in the office when I'm laying down. They go into they close the door. They had the holiday channel on, so I was listening to what? Uh, so to, tor uh, to torture you? In, in, I kind of like the holiday music? music. I heard. I was trying to guess how long. Have I was you on had coffee song. tonight, Tony? I had a cup. I did. <laughs> just, just cool down. Cool it. Cool it. I had a Seven Eleven. I put my number in. It's not my fault. I haven't sent them coffee. Oh, yeah, he hasn't sent me coffee. Yeah. 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 I still got a big thing of Maxwell House, though. Yeah. All right, Tony. Tony. I know. Set, I, set, yeah, I love my coffee. Set, I do. Tone it down. Tone, tone it down, Sony. Boy, it's a, the, the, not like coffee. Yeah. I used to sound like that on Coke for crying out Would that keep you up, Alex? The Coke? Would that keep you up like coffee? Oh, for days. Really? <laughs> For days. What a sheltered life you've led, Tony. You've never <laughs> tried Coke? I remember once here in New York. Coca-Cola. My friend Steve had a had an advertiser that had a lot of money because he, he ran a he ran a, 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 a phone sex service. Oh wow. I'm and sure. he we went up to his place and he pulls out, I swear to you, a bag this big of cocaine. Oh my God. And then he pours it out on this giant glass dining room table and starts drawing a line in a spiral all the way around, all the way around into the center of the, of, of the table, right? And he said, okay, let's see if we can get to the end of it. Oh my God. <laughs> Isn't that a lot to do? Well, I... Yeah. I swear to you, I had to make a plane the next day, and when I went home and tried to go to sleep, it was like my body was vibrating. Oh my God. I think that was the last time I ever did a sufficient amount of cocaine. That was are it, you, you know. Are you gonna be on next week? Yes, why wouldn't I be? I, it's right before Christmas, I didn't know. I know, we, we will be off the, the week between Christmas and New Year. Okay, that's I forgot that that was the week. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll still bother you for one more week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, I missed your show last night, so. I missed my show last night. Yeah, I heard. <laughs> well, what happened is these lights, which are on a switch here, see how they go on and off, see, like that? Yeah. Are, but they, they run through a Wi-Fi, and somehow it's one of them stopped working, and I couldn't figure out why it stopped working. And I was trying to get it to work, and it wouldn't work. And then when it's time for showtime, and I can't get my lights on. Uh, and it turned out after about a half hour of trying, I'd been putting in the wrong password for the Wi-Fi. Mm. And I did that, and then it was working. So then I went on and did a short little show or something like that. But it was, it was nothing but one problem after another. <laughs> You know. And Phil said you and Charlene and Jeff were on. No, Charlene wasn't here. Charlene wasn't here. No. Oh. It Drunk was, Brian it, was on. It was Jeff and it Brian, was Charlene. It was Charlene. Brian Drunk Sigmund. Brian Sigmund and uh, who else? Well, who else was here? Charlie. Huh? Charlie was there. I was listening to you. Oh, Charlie. Charlie. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe he said Charlie in his accent and that sounded like Charlene. Oh, I see. We, we oh. went to dinner in San Francisco. And, Phil, Phil called in. And yeah, Phil was, called towards the end. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I listened to it today. We just yeah, left the restaurant. talking an hour about and sleds and toboggans. Actually, I got a lot of viewers to those shows. I think doing less show, I get more viewers just because they, they figure, oh, hey, I don't, they look and they see it's only 50 minutes. And that's much not as much of an investment as an hour and a half, you know. Oh, I need an hour and a half. It gets me from here to Lodi when I miss the show. So I, I see. Yeah, it's the perfect Lodi trip, is it? 
<laughs> Tony doesn't send you messages anymore? Yeah, he does. I gave you one about the Jamaican guy, remember? I, mean, I was hiding in the... I called my, my brother, then I left you the message right after that. It was on my mind. Yeah. I like the voicemails because I can hear... I you. get no Tony no Tony messages. I've been good. I try not to bother you now, so I try to be a good oh, boy. Oh, you know you better not, or I'm going to come out and find you. <laughs> yes. You're more than welcome. Come on up. I'll make you dinner. <laughs> you make me dinner? I'm a good cook. I'm sure you are. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm Mother, yeah. In fact, you make food for, for Shaggy every now and then. Uh, actually, I got to visit him soon. I told him I would to visit him. I'm going to make, you know, me and my sister are going to make this weekend my grandmother's rum cake. It takes about two days, though. So we got to buy the ingredients tomorrow. How much rum goes in there? You know, I don't know offhand. I have the recipe printed up downstairs. The The bread, ha the cake has to be soaked in it, the sponge. Yeah. yeah. It's like a tiramisu, right? Tiramisu, they soak the... Yeah, and no. then it's like a couple of the hot pot, Alex and Brian is is my sister said is getting the cake to rise. I actually have my grandmother's. What does this show become and when we're getting cooking tips from Tony? <laughs> like, you look at his Facebook page; he cooks a lot. If it works out good, I'll bring over. I'm going to bring over some cake to his house because we can't. I can't eat all this cake. Well, leave some for me, and I'll. I'll come. bring it up. So if I leave it over his house for you, I will. If it comes out, I'll, I'll show you a picture. I haven't been of over to see him. I haven't been over to see him because I, 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 I'm afraid of traveling in the subways right now. We're, we got COVID again. I thought when I go yeah. over, I mean, and right, the I'm reason right. we got COVID again is because we're not taking it seriously any longer. Yeah, but it's not. It's not go to the hospital on the ventilator. COVID. We're getting. Yeah. Well, hey, well, it, well, no, it's it's, it's, it's not. But, no, but it's, it, for some people, it is. If they didn't get the vaccinations, they well, they deserve it. <laughs> they deserve yeah, they, it. I agree with Brian. About four hundred people a day are dying in this country of COVID. Yeah, well, well we have big, we have a big uptick. They're all Republicans. And that's good. That's good shot. news unless you're one of those four hundred, or unless you make these. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, that's yeah we just we went from uh, the the new facility we just fired up like less than a year ago. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of machines in there right now, and uh, we were running uh, five days a week, uh, twenty four hours, and now we just flip the switch to 24 seven because of the big uptick. So we're doing good. Yeah. But you've got also the other things too, probably you're testing for now, the RSV, MSUSC, R RSV was our biggest, TRS 9573. Exactly. And 974. Yeah. A lot, uh, RSV was always our biggest seller before COVID. I love the news. They want it. They want to get you and say, Hey, here's a reason to watch the news. Here's news about the tridemic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're uh, and, and, and they don't they don't say anything about deaths. They just keep saying, "Oh, the flu's out." No, yeah, no, they, these today, three, tonight, yeah. tonight they talked about deaths. There was something like a thousand or something. It it's gone up. It's gone up because a lot of people think, "Hey, the coast is clear." But here in New York, uh, they're saying if you're indoors with a lot of people, wear the mask. They're, yep. they're saying it's time to put on the mask again. And I'll tell you, I don't mind the mask during the winter because it, it keeps your face from getting cold. Yeah. 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 We, oh. we still test every day antigen tests to get in the manufacturing building, and we wear masks. So Good. Oh, okay. Good. Well, listen, here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to sign off here. And when we sign off, you guys, if you'll just stay here, you can stay with Josh, who's going to be doing uh, uh, the uh, a little bit of... You know, uh, Jack's show, basically Jack's hour, and uh, I'm just gonna you can I'm just gonna keep this Zoom open, okay? It's just I got to do a lot of other things to get this thing to go out over Facebook and so on and so forth. <laughs> and if the rest of you out there who hate me would like to talk to somebody really nice, Josh is gonna be here for the next hour. And but, smart. So anyway, uh, everybody there, you wave goodbye for the time being, and I'll sign off from here, but don't go away, okay? There they go. There they are. There they go. That's the big wave goodbye thing that we do. And uh, stay tuned now for Josh, who is going to do an hour, uh, and he will we'll be doing it over at Facebook, all right? Uh, that's uh, uh, facebook.com forward slash A Bennett, okay? And we'll see you again, uh, let's see here, on uh, Monday uh, for the big pop-up show. So mm -hmm. don't go away. Mm -hmm. All these people are, uh, gonna, hopefully, uh, quite a few of them are going to be back here in just a bit. See you later, folks. Have a nice weekend, everybody.